Hello and welcome to Celtic Reptile and Amphibian. Today's video, requested by many, is about the care of the Western Green Lizard, Lacerta bilinata. The Western Green Lizard is one of Europe's Lacertids, inhabiting the Western countries such as France, Italy, Northern Spain and Germany. They've also been introduced to parts of the USA. They are a medium to large species, typically reaching lengths of 30 to 40 centimetres. Beautifully, the males during the breeding season can develop a blue throat, while females remain striking green, often with a double line down their dorsum, giving them their scientific name, bi meaning two, lanata meaning lines. Juveniles, however, are usually a duller brown or green. The most important aspect of this species' biology is its habitat, as that allows us to model its care as closely as possible to the wild. Western green lizards live in a wide variety of environments, such as temperate forest, meadows, scrubland and pasture. Coupled with the fact that they are found in continental Europe, this means that they can be successfully kept outdoors in most of Europe, especially in the UK. We house our animals either within a greenhouse or in an outdoor enclosure. A minimum size for a pair or trio would be 180 cm by 60 cm wide. If being kept outside, which is the optimal for western green lizards, their enclosure should also have a height of about 1 metre made from an unscalable material such as polycarbonate or glass. If kept indoors, these lizards will require a 120 cm by 60 cm vivarium for a pair or trio. A basking spot should be provided at one end with a temperature of 35 to 40 degrees centigrade. It is ideal to go down the bioactive route, planting the enclosure with lots of shrubs and introducing isopods and arthropods. Airflow is also very important. Adding a fan or providing large vents is a must. UV is also a necessity, or else these animals would risk forming metabolic bone disease. Make sure the enclosure is planted thickly with flowers and shrubs such as heather, carex grasses, thyme, lavender and rosemary. They also appreciate a log pile on which to bash during the summer and brewmate during the winter. Talking about brumation, western green lizards will brewmate from late October to around late March so it is important that the enclosure is between 50 to 60 centimetres deep. This allows the lizards to dig burrows deep enough to escape the cold. Western green lizards will feed on many commercially available insects. We usually feed mealworms and crickets as a staple, with other additions to the diet such as wax and calci worms. Always feed appropriately sized feeders, basing the size on the width of the lizard's head. It's also important to gut load the feeder insects with fruit, vegetables and dandelions as the nutrients from the food will go straight into the lizards. This not only helps ensure your lizards stay healthy, but also gives your animals a more natural coloration. Dusting the feeder insects is also an important step to ensure your lizards maintain healthy levels of vitamin and calcium. We encourage people to establish natural colonies of insects and invertebrates into the enclosure which will ensure your lizards can get an unlimited supply of a varied natural diet at no extra costs. Before your western green lizards go into brumation during the winter, it is advised to feed them waxworms or any other type of high fat insects to help them cope with the cooler temperatures in winter. Here at Celtic, we acquire all of our live food from the Live Food Hub. You can go to their website at www.thelivefoodhub.co.uk. When it comes to water, the best way of allowing your animals to drink is to spray the enclosure. We do this at least twice a day on a warm day and at least once a day when it's you know, cloudy or overcast. It's not a bad idea to provide a water bowl either. Breeding takes place from April to May, with the male courting the female. You'll notice a considerable amount of interaction between the male and female, including arm waving. Mating consists of the male biting the base of the female's tail and proceeding to intertwine. After a successful pairing, the female will become extremely fat, usually one to two months later, with the outlines of eggs visible. During this period, the female will actively look for ideal places to lay her eggs and may notably disrupt soil or sand in the enclosure. It is advised to keep an eye on the disrupted areas as the female may lay a clutch of six to 18 eggs there. The eggs can be collected and artificially incubated at 26 degrees for the best results. We'd like to thank you for watching this video. Please leave a like and subscribe for more and stay tuned 
with everything Celtic, reptile and amphibian. Thank you.